Today in the Real Truck Nation podcast, we have a generational smackdown, Dustin loses an argument about LED lights, and we talk about our new company, Ram. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Real Truck Nation podcast, episode four. That does mean we have three other episodes out currently. If you haven't listened to those yet, go take a peek. But uh, I guess we'll go ahead and, and start off with uh, what's behind us for those who are viewing on YouTube. Uh, some new real truck news for us. We have a new uh, fleet company truck. So we have uh, acquired a 2020 Ram 2500 Cummins. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, haven't Cummins. You got to say it right. Cummins. Cummins. <laughs> Cummings. That's a, <laughs> but uh, they... Uh, we haven't had a diesel in too long, so this is going to be kind of fun for us. So we'll do a little bit, a little bit different of a build with it. Uh, we've been expanding our horizons a little bit with the the Tundra Overland build, and then we might do that with uh, with this one also. So yeah, what it's been like probably four or five years since we had, uh, maybe not. I guess we the had the Power Stroke Duramax. A couple. Was the last one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and the Duramax. The right, Duramax. the white that and, white the white Duramax was and the, last the Champagne F two fifty. I think was around the same time. And we had the other twenty five hundred Ram. So we've had so a lot we've of the we've actually we've had diesels. Diesels. Yeah. <laughs> but this is also fun just because it's kind of a new model. And when we say new model, we mean facelift of the previous model. Pretty much. Basically. But um, looks really good. It has the uh, the night package. So it has all the black accessories on it and stuff, which Ram's been doing a good job on for a while. Because, uh, you know, it has all the, all the black trim, the black background on the headlights and black wheels and all that kind of stuff. Who doesn't love that? So yeah, especially with that color, looks yeah. really good. <clears throat> yeah, with uh, I forget the actual name of that particular color. It's uh, crystal graphite or something like that. They get creative. I'll take that. They do. They it's do. dark gray. They it's do. Dark. It's dark gray. <laughs> yeah, it's dark gray. But um, anyway, yeah. So we plan on trying to, uh, you know, do a, a pretty big build of this. But we we kind of have a few ideas uh, floating around on on how we want to do it. We know we probably want to build it a little bit bigger than usual. It is a bigger truck and. You know, we like going big when we can, and a uh, a coil sprung uh, truck like this is pretty easy to get, pretty big. Mm -hmm. It's already pretty big as is too at at stock height. That's pretty enormous. So. I feel like these are taller than the other than the other, yeah. You know, three quarter ton trucks out there. Yeah, at, it st is. at stock height, it is beefy. So yeah, we might uh, might be going with a six or an eight inch lift, which on these is pretty large. And then um, we talked about <clears throat> talked about doing kind of like. I never really know what to call this style, but like a street style. Mall crawler? Yeah, mall crawler style. There you go. Is the, probably the, which I, probably I, which the most I like. Relatable. I say that, yeah, I say that. Uh, Knowing I that we own mall crawlers. Right, I don't, yeah, I don't use that term as a derogatory term at all. Right. I just don't know how to better categorize it. But I know, like, we're not going to off-road it, right? I mean. Like, Chris would never, never drive really. a mall crawler. Uh, you might argue that I do. Well, no. I mean, you you use it though. You You've do. used it you on do. multiple occasions. And it's, you, it, you've, it's, you've it's built practical, it with a purpose. Uh, yeah, it's purpose built. Right, that's the okay. difference. Yeah. That's probably the difference. I have a six inch lift and two wheel drive. That's a mall crawler. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so we might, so, uh, the initial, the initial thought was kind of, if we did like a eight inch lift on 38s with 24, 14s and just kind of, you know, go bigger, go home, get some bumpers on it and stuff. I, I just think that, uh, these models look great like that. That's, you know, big diesels look great. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I mean, we're not really going to use it to tow and it's not really a truck you heavily off road in. But the other flip, uh, the, the flip side of that too, the, the other theory, which we were kind of talking about is maybe if we, we still maybe built it big, but instead of uh, big wheels, you just went with kind of like the heavy duty off-roadish style wheel, like a black Rhino has a lot like that and yeah. stuff. And then you put like a, just a big meaty tire on it, like a ranch hand bumper or something like that. And that might be a different Avenue we could go to, or just looks aggressive. Mm -hmm. I think is probably just the. Yeah, see, I was like you could drive uh, through a brick wall and it'd be perfectly fine. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So we kind of have those two. That's kind of that's kind of the two I'm balancing between now. I like the um, I like the mall crawler from you know Josh Lee per personal bias. Right. It looks good. I don't. And we're in you know we're in Florida, so we get sandy when we go off road. We don't have a whole lot that we can do go off road that interests me too much, unless you're trying to mud. Really. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean the the issue is go some around around here and probably most places on the East Coast is that that truck doesn't fit down the trails. <laughs> right. Oh, it's true. Right. Um, it's too too big. For not unless you, you wanna, don't care about the paint and mirrors. Yeah. You literally just have to be okay with no paint on the sides. Yeah. yeah. 
or you just find uh, dried up lake beds. So that yeah. so that probably influ- influences the decision on what we do here versus because you know, really I mean are you know are we really going to off road? Is that what this truck's for? You know the other trucks for? But it is just nice if we almost if we went with just a super aggressive truck, but still uh, functional. Maybe your um, you know your guy who works on a ranch or you know your a uh, guy who works out of his truck, but he still wants a really aggressive big look to it or something. I don't know. We might be able to find something in between there, but I don't know if y'all had any you know, ideas or suggestions on that. We'll kind well, of end up. Well, I think with 24s, why not go 26s? Yeah. So you guys are going in just a completely different direction. <laughs> I was prepared to come in. I'm happy that we're having this, this discussion, though, because I was prepared to come in here and drop the Dustin quote like, see, I'm different than y'all. Because <laughs> I was going to say we should go with like a – you know, again, that beefier off-road look, but you know, you see these HDs built and a three-inch lift, you can fit 40s on them. You do a little trimming. A lot of trimming or AEV fenders. Well, which, yeah, in those that in is itself. exactly <laughs> what you would do, actually. <laughs> yeah. It looks really good. Those yeah. in itself are a lot of cutting, isn't it? What's that? Oh, it's, yeah, fenders. it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You're, so you're their systems the are, off. it's a three-inch lift and then without the cutting, it's 37s. And you're talking eight-inch lift and 37s. You can do it on... Three. 30, 38, maybe. 1550s with 24 14s. Yeah. As the other. I mean, oh. maybe maybe there's something where we could build it that way first, like without doing a lot of cutting, maybe. And then, like, and then bump it back up because it's really not too difficult to change kits on these trucks either. Uh, so I don't know. That could be an option. You could build it twice, twice the fun, one truck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Two builds, one truck. We got it. So I don't know. We, uh, but if any of if any of uh, you viewers or listeners have uh, any suggestions or what you would like to see us build it as or you know what kind of parts you might like to see go on or what kind of style or anything like that, feel free to comment. We'd be you know open to suggestions and and kind of how would you build this uh, this Ram right. twenty five hundred? Tell right. us off road or street. Yeah, off road or, or mall street. Crawler. What what do the people want? What do the people want? Or say? just straight mud bog. I think people. That's, want, that's where Florida comes in, right there. I think it depends on what platform people are going to be listening on, whether it's street or off road. But I bet you it's going to be one or the other. <laughs> right. But I bet a lot. Of, I I don't know. A lot. A lot of people like some street, man. We haven't really done. Well, we kind of have. A street, yeah, but not, a, not that extreme. We haven't went four. We have never. Had, we've we, never had fourteen. No, we did on the F one fifty. The F one fifty was pretty. We had fourteen. Was pretty wides. extreme. And we, and that was only made, halfway, that was only halfway done too. We only we only did kind of half of. What and that we was an F one fifty. F one fifty. I think right. a bigger truck would look. Yeah, I definitely. If we're if you're going to go that route, it definitely looks better on a HD truck for yes. sure. Yes. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I don't it know. My, my, I think it's the, uh, actually I'll, I'll revise that to say, I think that it looks better when you have a solid front axle. Yes. I think the yes. big IFS stuff can look a little bit funky. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. For sure. But still, I think it's also just easier. It it's 40s. easier to get them big. They, they look bigger and you know, they yeah. fit that they fit that setup a lot better. So you're not physically your your fenders aren't on top of the tire. Right. Um, but uh, the small the smaller trucks, the uh, mid sized trucks or whatever with the with the bigger wheels just look like they're on stilts sometimes. Yes. Looks like they're roller skates. They're like teetering down the road. But regardless, we'll end up what whatever style we go with. It'll still be wheels, tires, lift, bumpers, lights, cover, steps, all those kind of parts. Uh, the whole package. The whole package. The whole shebang. Still undecided. So, yep. yep. I mean, yeah, if you've got that a new 2020 Ram and you're wondering what it looks like with certain bumper apart on it, let us know because we need to make some decisions. <clears throat> yep. And uh, I think that that's probably a good segue into my next topic, which uh, I was thinking about it when we were going over, when I was going over some parts for this build and things. And uh, I wanted to know from you guys what is the most underrated truck part on the market right now? So truck part category or item, because I think that there's a lot that are probably looked over or people tend to focus more on one part and and not another. Mm -hmm. What is the most underrated? Like, what's what do you go for that most other people might not right away? I got two that come to mind right off the bat. Okay, one of them probably wouldn't apply to this build. But if we're talking generalities here, Mm -hmm. I'm going to say gears to start. (laughs) Okay, and they're not cheap. Which is probably why a lot of people don't think about it. It's one of those you don't see. If you see a truck go down the road, you don't know if it has gears or not, but the driver definitely knows. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, maybe with off-road, you know, kind of overland, that's getting more popular. You know, it's certainly common to re-gear a Jeep or, you know, Tacoma mm-hmm. or something if you're, you're kind of in that world. But uh, I think that, you know, a lot of people do the, you know, bigger lift, the 35s or 37s. They never think about gears. 
That's the true. truck becomes a dog. It doesn't. It, <laughs> the engine's struggling constantly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Miles per gallon go out the window. Been there, done that. Yes. <laughs> Gears can change. You know your entire outlook on your truck. Now I'll also say with that too. I've owned uh, I've owned diesels that have gotten really big lifts, really full size diesels that have yeah. gotten really big lifts, uh, really big wheels and tires, and I almost don't notice it at all. Well, but that's I've also had enough, enough torque to take right, it. Right, they have enough torque to take it, and those aren't you know quite as as common. However, I did have an F one fifty that was on forties, and it was like scary entering the interstate. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, I put five uh, thirteens in it, night and day, absolute night and day difference. That made that truck so much more drivable. You get your acceleration back, yes. you get your miles per gallon back, you get some power back. I mean, I got, it's it's a game changer if if you feel like you're, if you've put big tires on your truck and don't really like the way that it performs anymore, Right. look at a set of gears. Yep. Now, absolutely. they aren't cheap. Yeah, it's definitely The pricey. install is usually what gets you. I don't think the gear sets are typically horrendous. Right, yeah, those, but, those aren't really you know, it is It is a skill that most people don't have and probably wouldn't attempt in their driveway. But yeah, I mean, it can get, it, you'll get your truck back. Now, that's why I said it didn't apply to this build because what does this make from the factory? A thousand foot pounds? Uh, the 2500 makes 850. Okay. 3500 makes a thousand. Gotcha. Just right. tuning. I mean, I'm sure. Just yeah, a, yeah. Throw a tuner on it. Yeah. You're probably little pushing e- a little extra four boost. digits. When but you're still, when you're still above 800, too. I mean, <laughs> yeah. so 37s, the truck's not really going to notice 37s. Right. Yeah, if you're right, maybe fine. if you're towing, you know, you want a big truck and you're going to tow big trailers all the time, you might want to think about it. But I think right. if you're just driving it around town, the full size diesels aren't going to notice that extra weight. And that's true. I haven't had a lot of experience much. with that, too. I'm sure when you go to a bigger tire size, and even if you have a heavy duty truck, if you're towing heavy, you're probably going to notice quite a bit difference mm-hmm. there. And, and gearing might have a lot to do with it, too, which I'm sure, you know, the F350s ha- or the, the 3500s and F350s have different gearing, you know, partially because of that reason. Yep. But um, no, it's, uh, that's good. You said you had two. Do you have another one? Yeah, let's let Dustin go. Oh, with. okay. Um, well, mine's going to be. This is something that I don't see. I think it'd be more popular if people knew about it and knew how kind of the tuning works in a vehicle. But throttle boosters. Okay. All right. I know where you know where we go. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, throttle booster. What it does is it changes the throttle sensitivity of your vehicle. Which, believe it or not, I think most people who buy tuners are looking for a throttle sensitivity adjustment before anything. Right. Well, every modern vehicle that I've owned has like throttle lag. Or exactly. pedal delay or right. whatever, exactly. and it's really annoying sometimes. And it's it's and a lot of times it's built in from the factory. Uh, I think it's for drivetrain protection, safety, kind of being taken easy on the drivetrain. <laughs> so you don't just so mash you're not it, it all the time. Well, yeah. then so, I'm, I'm hitting it harder because I. Well, exactly. Well, uh, I'm trying to get out across this road without true. getting hit. I don't need it to wait a half a second or a second before it <laughs> yeah. decides to so, go. So I think a throttle booster is a way of really getting what you want out of a tune because a lot of people don't necessarily want their vehicles to be faster. They rarely drive them at the limit, anyways. Throttle booster gives you it, does, it gives you the throttle sensitivity that you want, so that it feels more powerful. A lot of times, when people get a tuner and they say, "Oh yeah, it feels a lot faster," they're really just talking about how sensitive the throttle is and how how much better it takes off at the light, or you know, I can, right, I can exactly. Because when trip the wheels now, when, when you're I driving want to. city or highway, that's really kind of what you're noticing if something's fast or not, right? Is just how quick you yeah. you it's move. Not your, when it's you, not your top speed or your right. high RPM power. Right. It's, Exactly. It's how fast you're going off the line. So well, not to mention, I think those are typically really simple to install. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. They're, they're like they're like an inline, basically a plug you put in line between yeah. the pedal and the the yeah yeah. They're, they're plug, plug. plug and plug and play. They're inexpensive. They they're, yeah. Uh, so they're not going to actually mess with a lot of the you know any sort of mechanics or anything like that. It's literally just making that more sensitive. Less, so less likely for warranty issues. It's less and way invasive less likely than a tune. Right. Yeah, because that's what it, that's my next point was going to be. Um, you know, you're not flashing the ECU, you know, you're not, right. not oh, true. making any modifications That's there. Right. So yeah, yeah, you're not for warranty work. Air fuel mixtures, nothing like that. It's literally just yeah. speeding up the computer. Yeah. So me but, personally, I'd, okay. still, I'd still go with a tune just because I like the, I'd like to Same. go the full package. I'm, I'm with you on that. But I'll just send for it. the majority of people who want a tune, really the throttle booster is going to take right. care of it for them. Or if somebody who might be on the fence about a tune, I don't know if that, you know, I want to mess with my warranty or I don't, I don't know if I want to mess with the engine or, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You know that might not be an option they're familiar with, like you first and mentioned. It's, it's funny because some of the throttle the throttle boosters out there, it gives you like levels of how sensitive you want it. Really, pretty much, it's taking your full gas pedal throw and like shortening it so that way that way like if you you put oh. your gas pedal half half of what it normally is, you can actually some of these tuners out there have it 
half throttle is actually 100 percent throttle so it's going to feel like a lot wow more so a lot of these tuners have like you're right. extreme modes built in <laughs> to like... where you barely tap the gas and you're giving the vehicle full <laughs> throttle immediately it's like hashtag accidental burnouts exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not going to be good for your gas mileage Ugh. but it's 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 a lot funner that way but yeah i mean it's something i'd still go okay. with full tune but like I said, throttle I like boosters it. out there, they're they're they've gained in popularity over the last few years because I think people are realizing that the throttle sensitivity is really what kind of makes the car feel right. better on the it's road. It's so easy, non permanent. Yep. Yeah. It's a good relatively good, good inexpensive. Thought. Yes. Too. Certainly a fraction of the cost of a full tune. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh let's see if I like Forrest, both of those. And I was gonna say, let's see if you take my second one. I hope not. I have two. I know one isn't yours, but the other one, it isn't uh, it isn't as, as uh, niche of a product category as that, but it's just tonneau covers. Tonneau covers in general. Did I steal it? No. Okay, good. <laughs> no. So tonneau covers in general, I see way too many trucks just driving around with no tonneau covers. Honestly, before I worked here, I never even thought twice about a tonneau cover. I, Same. I didn't really, I don't know. I just didn't think about them. My friends didn't have them. Uh, I never thought about shopping for one. I almost thought that was like a, uh, somebody from Dustin's generation or something might might have done that, but <laughs> my generation because I'm so old. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, like my like my dad might have done that. <laughs> but <clears throat> when I uh, when I started working here and I and I you know I got a lot more uh, product training and and got to touch and feel a lot more of them and all the trucks had them and and company trucks had them and stuff. I was like, wow, this is super functional. Why does every truck not have one form of tonneau cover? And I don't really. I'd honestly like to know what some people's gripe might, might be, why they don't want them. If, I think I, a lot if of them. If I had my first guess off the top of my head would be the fact that most people probably hear of tonneau covers when they're buying their truck and they cost a fortune from the dealership. I sure do. So they think, oh my gosh, tonneau covers are thousands of dollars for this basic little thing. And, and then the dealership like, I'm never going to get really one. Is good. No. So, well, but, I was going to, you know, also, uh, there's still probably a perception among some people. It's probably Dustin and I's generation. My, yeah, our generation. Or, uh, maybe we're in different generations. I don't know. We're I, uh, to, pretty to, close. To the forest same. where... Compared, we're, yeah, we're comparatively. The same one. But old school covers were awful. That you know, too. the old snap, snap covers. Oh. You have to drill rails into it. Yeah, so there's probably yeah. some old... There could uh, be some stigma. You're yeah. right. Yeah, so like, I, you know, <laughs> when I had one on the Colorado before I put the rack on, and P.S., I'm thinking about taking that off and getting a tonneau cover again because the inside of my bed is moldy and Ugh. turning green and Ugh. it's full of leaves and stuff right now yeah wouldn't have like, a cover i know that's part of the decision making <laughs> process here of course <laughs> but uh thinking about getting another one on but i remember sh going over i had um i think it was a gator fx at the time and went and went over to my dad's house and he started playing around and he he still thought that tonos were you know the old snap-on covers or just you know because and they're great for their own reasons but a solid one-piece cover right which um, both of those you at the time had to drill into the vehicle no matter which one you wanted yeah so you know I, I can buy i can buy that suggestion for tonos just yeah right and there's so many options now between you know roll up and hard folding and hard rolling uh, right and retractable whether, whether and, you uh whether you say oh i need full bed access i have a <laughs> fifth wheel a gooseneck i i got a toolbox i got a toolbox i you know, whatever it is, there's a cover out there for you that will fit your needs, but you can, uh, you can keep things secure in there. You can keep things dry in there. You just, you know, leave stuff like simply the fact of being able to leave things in the bed of your truck overnight in a storm when you're traveling, mm -hmm. like you don't have to worry about things blowing out. It's, in, it's incredible. Like why wouldn't, why wouldn't you have one? Also the, the cost on a lot of them now has started, there's such a, a low buy-in point to be able to get a tonneau cover. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you it's just like want to try it out. 225 to 250. Yeah. Yes. And then, you're if you're not sure, get that one first. I had a, I had a friend who had, who had, uh, you know, the exact same idea, like, oh, I don't know. And then he started seeing my covers on my trucks. He's like, wow, that's pretty great. And so he wanted to give it a try. And, uh, he got into a, a soft roll of cover for you at 229 or whatever it is. And he loves it. He's had it on there for four or five years now. Mm -hmm. Things great. And he loves it. And you know, he also has an AFA bed, so he has that much more utility out of it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, things like that, I think people uh, owe it to themselves to look into tonneau covers and realize how much more uh, functionality they can get out of their truck bed mm -hmm. with simply adding that on. It's such an easy install. So, 
That was my call. first one. I, it was it was an obvious, but like maybe too right. obvious to wear. Like correct, exactly, exactly. Like people good. don't think they need it until maybe there's one particular instance where they're like, oh, that would be nice. But just the day to day use, I keep stuff back there all the time, twenty four seven for sure. Yeah, safety equipment. I keep a spare trailer tire back there. A lot of straps, them. All a lot of them. Stuff. Speaking of keeping it in there twenty four seven, they're typically safe because you can't open them unless you can open the tailgate. Correct, and especially on a lot of the newer trucks, like on my truck now, at the uh, the tailgate locks with the key. So yeah. I never have to worry about that. And then as long as the uh, the tailgate's locked, the cover's locked, and you know, yeah. most of your covers, and then other ones have keys and stuff like mine, it's great. Yeah. Good to go. Now I carry a bunch of cable locks and yeah. things like that around because I can't lock anything back there unless it's <laughs> physically locked <laughs> to something. So yeah, probably an obvious, but definitely a good, good suggestion there. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right. You ready for round two? <clears throat> I only brought one most to gonna, this conversation. Most so going to guess it. No, I try. can't guess it. There's Shoot. too many things. Uh, my second one would be brake upgrades. Oh, it, it goes perfectly along with the uh, gears. It does. I, you're gonna if you're gonna go forward better, you got to be able to stop better. Yeah, and, and I picked them I independently of one another. I just thought of two things that has, have changed my life. It's definitely something our generation. And actually, better both brakes things and better uh, gears. I've never upgraded brakes. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. You really don't. It's really an incredible thing. So this well, is coming. Squeaking our place. This is coming <laughs> from a car and like autocross and track background and. Uh, lifted vehicle. Lifted vehicle. The Jeep being the example for oh, gears yeah. and brakes. Yep, the, the LJ has awful. Yeah, old Jeep. Brakes. Old Jeeps. People. Oof, people yeah. know, they're uh, bad. But good rotors and pads. Got the EBC yellow stuffs in there, and that was a game changer. So, you know, again, I did some uh, way back in the day. Did some big brake kits on various cars and things that take to the track. The difference when you step on the pedal, like it's almost more impressive than <clears throat> power mods. When you've got Agreed. a really aggressive, strong brake system, yep. yeah, um, and you step on the pedal, you, it'll freak people out. Yeah, it, no, in a it's, good way. It's definitely there is it's confidence kind of a, inspiring. There is a, a, a kind of a comparison there you can make between what a performance brake package can do, gives you a little sim- similar feelings to what a performance intake or performance tuner, tuner can do. Oh, way more. It's really especially if you get especially if you do the brake upgrade. After you do the big wheels and tires, and you know how bad the vehicle oh, yeah. stops, right? Then so you, you can, can get, really feel you can that compensate difference. and get that extra stopping yeah, power from, and stuff, and give you a little bit more. If you're upgrading control. brakes uh, with a factory tire setup, you'll feel mm-hmm. a difference. It's gonna be better for sure. Especially, I mean, towing. your initial bite and other things like you'll notice that right off the bat. But, but if also, you, but if I, you do it after the wheel and tire upgrade, it is monstrous. And even when you're not necessarily too, when you're just coming to to a complete stop, maybe, but like when you're going on a turn, right, on a sharp turn where you have to slow down significantly, but you know it's it's even and controlled and things like that. But I've personally never done a, uh, never done a brake upgrade. I've, I i do not think I keep trucks really long enough to have the brakes go bad where I want to replace them <laughs> or anything like that. And, but, um, I, I bet, I mean, I, I can, I have an idea of how much just, you know, uh, uh, original equipment rotors and calipers and pads and all that kind of stuff are. So, I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well just go ahead and go with Yeah. The- I mean, if you're, if you're the, if you're going to, you know, AutoZone or advance or something and just getting the cheapest stuff you can get, it's obviously going to be more expensive, but ultimately at some point you're going to have to replace this stuff anyway. Yeah. So you may as well look to do like OEM replacement, like more aggressive pads. You know, there's some other, I guess there are some downsides and if you like clean wheels and you get a super aggressive brake pad, yeah. You're going to be cleaning your wheels more often because they create more dust and all that. But ceramics or Yeah, I mean, at some point, it's not even an expense in the modification sense. It's like, hey, I have to replace it. You've got to do it anyway, you, right? You could sell it to, you know, your significant other. Hey, you know, my brakes are worn out. Safety. I got to do this mod. It's safer. <laughs> <laughs> Two things you don't want to cheap out on on maintenance. That's your brakes and your wiper blades. Wiper blades, one hundred percent. That's true. Then those are just. That, I got new are... wipers like three weeks ago, and they already squeak. I don't exactly. know what it is. But also, and it's going to be a white out rainstorm like we have in Florida, and then you won't be able to see. You'll be able to break well. Get out of the way yep. when, you, when, uh, when you can't see in front of you. I hope wipers wasn't your second suggestion. No, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad one, though. That's, that no, is underrated. Not, that is agreed. very underrated. Agreed. That that's, it, That'll be it my It is the one. nicest feeling when you go get some nice new Rain-X wiper blades, and it's raining, <laughs> and you just you turn on half the speed you normally would. It's just... 
That's uh, a mod I hate spending money on. I agree. I'm going to put it in that category. I, don't, I hate spending. They're not, spe- that, they're they're not that expensive. They're you just pop them on in the parking lot, you're good to go. Or whatever it's for very underrated. Blades. That's oh. one of the first things I do. When I get a truck, there's a there's a, there's a a checklist of things. This would be a good, this would be a good <laughs> topic one day. <laughs> we'll have to save there's it. A, there's a checklist of things that I do when I get a new truck. One yeah. of them is wiper blades. And we're, the, and we're the old guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our generation. <laughs> well, uh, my, second, my second thing was also on this checklist of things, is uh, replacement LED bulbs. This, if, um, if you have a truck... I can 100% disagree with you. If you have a truck... No, I like it. If you buy a truck that comes with halogen bulbs, front or rear, any oh. interior, anything... Okay, now we're talking... I thought you were talking interior, not exterior. Any of it. Any of it. All, it's all, all of it. It's relatively inexpensive. For what it is, it's relatively inexpensive, but the, the experience, the drive time... Nighttime drive experience is so dramatically better for two hundred dollars in lights to do like you know, the whole truck. It's you know so what's much funny better. about this though? I have also done that to the Jeep. Yes. Like headlight, headlights, LED only. headlights, Every, everything else. You can just reverse bulbs. You ever put in some nice LED reverse bulbs? You're like, holy cow! I this can guy, see. He's excited about. Some, I am. I'm passionate love- about LED like, <laughs> LED bulbs. <laughs> I don't like the exterior stuff. It's probably a separate conversation, but I'll say this about the interior bulbs: they're inexpensive. And even in the Jeep, it makes it feel 15 years newer. Oh, good point, too. You if, get the 6K. You get the white. nice, crisp white light in there. It feels like, you know, every new car comes with those yeah. basically at this point. But oh, also, put those in there and it just it's a different experience. You just open the door and it puts a smile on your face. Related to that, too, because some people don't like the white because <laughs> it's just so bright. I haven't done it personally, but I've seen other people that do it. I'm not opposed to it. But you get a red or green I've because then if you turn it on at night, it doesn't uh, set off your light easier, sensitivity easier, nearly yeah, as bad, but you can eyes. still see everything perfectly. I think that's kind of a cool idea. I was your age once. I've done <laughs> I've done the colors. <laughs> done, Just go with white. Neons. We were around then, Fast and Furious. Yeah, I did. You know, I've did blue, red, green, you know, you name it. Like it, this, it, this F-150 I got, it came, of course, with halogen... Uh, Low beams, high beams, fogs, reverse lights, and and brake lights. Immediately replaced it all. My headlights are so much brighter, so much easier to see. My my high beams are insane. My fog lights are insane. I can see so much better. I have so much more confidence driving like country roads at night. And then my reverse bulbs are super bright. I can back up way better because, of course, I got pretty tinted windows. So now I don't have to roll down my windows in order to see the light in my mirrors. It's It's all around better. And it's super, super easy to replace. If you have a uh, like a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter wrench, you can change all. You can change front and back all of them. And a Phillips head screwdriver. It's so easy. Might need some torque bits. I don't mind with these new with the newer vehicles. Think, possibly. Yeah. Maybe I think my tail lights need torques. Mine don't. But but uh, but anyway, I, that that was my second was uh, was LED replacement bulbs. I think that's uh, very often overlooked. And they're that's a good uh, one. Crazy. Again, another replace a, a, a part that needs to be replaced eventually, like brakes. You can just go ahead and do it. It's a, sort of a maintenance thing because your bulbs are going to go out anyway. Sort of. It's a you stretch. Might, it's you a might stretch. A, it is a stretch. You might actually have to remove the halogens first and then say, "Look, they're burnout." <laughs> like <laughs> then the go, then go down that road because I I don't know that I've replaced a burnt out halogen interior bulb. Uh, maybe interior bulb. Uh, maybe on my. 1990 oh. Civic when I had that, <laughs> and it was probably six months ago. Exactly, <laughs> like, it <laughs> lasted it, it that just, long. Yeah, it just it just. But you're right, how, the, how much how much better it feels in, inside and outside and everything. It's it just it's well worth it. Good bang for your buck and safety. Add that to the list of. Uh, I agree with true. I agree with the headlights. All the interior stuff that's just aesthetics. That's you. Aesthetics, yeah. You could put a you could put like a, a light blue tint on any of the halogen bulbs on the inside. It'd give you the same effect. No, no. It'd it's that instant effect. on, instant off. Yes. Oh yeah, no no warm up, instant. It's it's just a different it's a different feel. It's just yeah. it's a little picky, but all right, all right. Your excursion would look like a disco. <laughs> <laughs> that would be insane, actually. LED lights and a little disco ball in the middle. You, you get the LED RGB lights every, ones because you have you have. Two up front, one in the middle, and then do you have one in the rear for the third seat? Yeah, like two front, two middle, one back. Yeah. <laughs> there's lights, there's so lights all lights. over that thing. Everywhere. And those are probably well, really dim old halogens and big old housing. So you could fit a big old LED in there. That means I'm spending a few hundred more bucks on lighting just because there's a, so no, much, not even, not even so much, much more. So much. You don't it's, have LED head you don't have LED uh, headlight bulbs in your excursion? No, they're the they're the halogen. I'm still rocking Jeez. halogens in the Colorado. Jeez, oh my god! And they're really bad. Yeah, I have the factory lights. I know you don't have. Awful. I don't. I know you don't have halogens in that Jeep. 
No, I've got the LEDs. So those Jeep headlights. Are those damn. were okay. The yeah. Colorado is bad. The the Jeep is just dangerous. And other <laughs> terrible OEM equipment from Jeep. The headlights are really, really bad. Even on the JKs, I had a JK. Beam. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they were. It was cannot see borderline. Well, I was going to say borderline dangerous, but no, it's straight up it dangerous. Is dangerous. So LED headlights on Jeep should be mandatory. <laughs> yes. Like that's a che- on a checklist for a Jeep. Yes. New headlights immediately. Yeah, anybody, any, any, any year. Any year, if it comes with halogen factory bulbs, replace them first yep. thing. You will not regret it. I don't think any, I don't think anybody would replace their bulbs with LED headlight bulbs. It goes, yeah, I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, I'll see it. No, no, you well, literally can see it. Right. Yep. It's there. It's, it's a. It's strictly a visual. Right. Thing. And it's not like uh, other mods, like like gears. We're like, oh, I don't know if I feel it or whatever, and you don't see it. It's like, no, it's there every yeah. time you drive at night. You get to use them. It's great. They don't get as hot. More fuel efficient. No warm up. More fuel efficient, energy efficient. Oh, oh fuel! All right, fuel. fuel. Energy. Same Whatever. thing. I was like, you that get, is you know, a, you know, a big stretch. <laughs> you know I mean, if you want to talk about alternator load and other <laughs> stuff, I'm like, Woo, man, we're going, and then, we're getting uh, deep. I mean, because uh, HIDs, I don't really think are a thing anymore. Not right? really. Those aren't really. I, mean, I, 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 I like I liked HIDs. A, HIDs were very much in like my time, like when I first started kind of getting into modification stuff. Course, and I'll please. tell you what, those were the please. worst. Please. Those were the worst. My time. HIDs back, I still way like back a, in 2010. I still like a good HID setup. Yeah. <laughs> no, I still have HIDs on the uh, in my car, and they're they're like the original. Uh, they're still working. Affordable projector HIDs. I love. I had, I had HIDs great. and they went out all the time. They got crazy hot. I actually had them. Um, I had custom headlights made for my Jeep, and it melted one of the housings. Mm. See, the LEDs have those massive like uh, heat sinks on the back, yeah, yeah, yeah. which to me seem like, all right, those that's a little sketchy, versus my, the HIDs on mine have been No, have the, been heat great. Sink, the heat sinks are cool. It just keeps it that much cooler and that much that much safer and stuff. But um, yeah, those are those are my two. So I think those are all pretty good. We covered a lot of, I think we covered a lot of, lot of, I think we lot of ground there. A few generations worth of uh, <laughs> yeah. underrated no truck what bars. You, have, I think you, have, you might have a little bit better insight or, or might uh, want to look into a product you haven't really thought about before. I think a lot of those are just overlooked and underrated. Mm-hmm. Most people like to jump to wheels, lift tires, bumpers, things like you see or whatever, but I think those are, those are overrated, but, um, or these are underrated rather. So I, uh, I guess that's going to wrap us up for today. So I appreciate y'all tuning in for episode four of the real truck nation podcast. Uh, make sure you go check out our other three episodes and, uh, check back every two weeks for a new episode. Thanks.